Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a short training course on unsteady heat conduction equation. In today's video, we will be talking about analytical solution of 1D unsteady heat conduction equation and the technique which we will be using for the solution is separation of variables. You might have heard about this technique many times. However, the reason of making this particular video is to understand each and every step and try to understand those steps with respect to the physical significance of the equation and try to visualize the solution and the results of the solution. So we'll be focusing on those things. Firstly, a brief introduction to separation of variables. We'll not talk more about it. Then we'll go for understanding the problem physically. We have already talked about the physical significance many times, but today we'll be talking about the physical significance of the solution. I mean, how each and every step relates to the physical significance that we'll be exploring. Then boundary conditions and homogeneity, also the initial conditions we'll be talking in detail. And application of Fourier series or orthogonality during the solution of this particular equation. So we have talked about this Fourier series and orthogonality in the previous video. If you go through it, you will learn more about this particular technique. And obviously we'll talking about the limitations of this particular technique and also what we will be talking about in the upcoming videos. So before we proceed, let us just pay tribute to Fourier because in heat transfer, Fourier is everything, whatever he has done because of that we can actually do a lot of engineering problems. So that's why again I have taken this slide. So let us try to understand the physical problem, I mean the mathematical form of the physical problem. So this is the equation we have get rid of the term alpha. So you can just visualize this is a kind of non-dimensional equation. But in this video, we are not going to talk about how to non-dimensionalize this particular equation. We'll make a separate video. But just to make the equation short, we have assumed alpha is equal to 1 or the equation is a non-dimensional equation. And the boundary condition for this is a, you can see this is a 1D equation because we have only one spatial direction and this is a transient problem because we have a time coordinate. So to, to solve this, what we need is we need two spatial boundary conditions and one initial condition. So the boundary conditions are at zero space. I mean, say this is the solution space. So we have the solution space from zero to one. So this is zero, this is one. So this is the entire solution space and we are solving for T greater than zero. So what does it mean at T equal to zero, the temperature is known. So we want to know what will happen as we proceed with progress with time. So initially, uh, so those, uh, okay, we are talking about the boundary conditions. So two boundary conditions are at x equal to zero, we have temperature zero. And also at x equal to one, we have temperature zero. So those are the two boundary conditions. And this is the initial condition. So how exactly it is written? So initial condition means t equal to zero. For all x, it will follow this particular function x minus x square. So I have plotted it in Excel. I have just taken few points and uh, dotted, I mean, uh, taken the points and joined the line. So you can see you can have a kind of distribution like this. So this is the initial temperature which is given. But in reality, you may not get this kind of realist, I mean, this kind of easy situation. Your temperature distribution of the solution space or say this is a rod so that can be random like this or any it can follow any function so this is a kind of approximated boundary condition a kind of easier boundary condition or we call it a homogeneous boundary condition so i mean within a moment i'll talk about homogeneous boundary condition but let us just see it 
this is the initial condition that is following x minus x square so homogeneous means if you look at this point and that point and also here you can see there is a symmetry so the temperature is zero here and also at the end temperature is zero so i mean both the ends this is a similar temperature so this is kind of there is a homogeneity and that's why we call this kind of boundary condition as homogeneous boundary condition so with separation of variables tackling the boundary condition which is homogeneous that is easier there are techniques uh, to solve for non-homogeneous boundary conditions as well however that is not easier but uh, in upcoming videos we will also try to cover this non-homogeneous problem but for the time being I am just explaining that homogeneous boundary conditions are important because that will make the solution easier and when we are learning we should also always learn with the homogeneous boundary condition so this much information is needed for this particular video so what I have done is I have solved it in ComSol multiphysics just to have a glimpse of the solution so how exactly temperature will be distributed once time progresses so this is the zero time you can see this is zero second as we proceed with time say 0.1 second 0.2 second this is how the profile is coming down so you can just stop and visualize you have a rod where the temperature is higher at the middle so what will happen gradually the temperature will go down because it will cool down because there is a high gradient here you can see this is a high temperature and this is a very low temperature so there is a gradient so it will cool down so it is getting cooled and cooled and you are getting profiles like this so again I am telling uh, we don't know how exactly we are maintaining the temperature zero here and here because if you visualize it is very difficult to maintain a temperature zero here and that is why this boundary condition is approximated just try to visualize physically you have a hot rod and this hot rod has a temperature distribution like this so what will happen with respect to time you cannot control the temperature of this two point because if the temperature at the middle is higher so as time progresses these two ends will also increase the temperature of the two ends will also increase but mathematically somehow we are managing to keep it zero every time so this is difficult so this will not be in line with the normal cooling of a hot body so this is little bit different but for the mathematical purpose we have taken this boundary condition I have taken a lot of time to explain the boundary condition because this is the heart of the story if you do not understand homogeneity if you do not understand the normalcy of the boundary conditions or simplicity of the boundary condition then we will not be able to understand the problem so initially I am just uh, again recap uh, doing a recap so you should know about your equation like the way I told this is a first order with respect to time and the second order with respect to space you need one initial condition given two boundary conditions given and we have to solve for t x t that means at every point we want to know the temperature information for different times that is t x t now we solve it by separation of variables what it means it means this function t is a fun uh, this temperature is a function of x and t so we assume that there are two functions different functions that is x and t and this x is a function of only space and this t is function of only time so we are separating so this function does not depend on t and this function does not depend on x that's what, that is what separation is and mathematically this is consistent you can do this now what we are doing is you see this particular equation and replace it so as those two functions are only function of a particular independent variable all those partial derivative will go and you can replace this partial derivative with respect to actual derivative so here del t del t if you do it it will become 
x x d t d t so here i have done it you can see x d t d t similarly the right hand side it will be t t and d square x d x square because uh, you are doing derivative with respect to x so you can take this t t out because this 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 guy is a function of t only and you have this total derivative now what we do is we do a separation like this t t that should come in one side and x x it should come on the other side so now we do a manipulation that means mathematical alteration and here we have all that t which is, which is a function of time in the left hand side and in the right hand side what we have we have all the things which is a function of space so what we have done is we have separated time and space now as these two equations are equal this can be equated with a constant so say the constant or the function is k here now this k could be positive or negative this is a point but we do not know the information whether this k would be positive or negative initially we have taken negative k so k is taken as lambda square this is for the solution purpose you already know about it if you do not know just remember this lambda square is taken for the purpose of mathematical ease nothing else lambda square is nothing but say k but we are taking a negative sign here but it could be negative it could be positive but what decides whether it would be positive or negative it it depends on the boundary condition suppose we have boundary condition like this every time both the ends will be at zero temperature so you have a kind of so your function should be a kind of periodic function so we have already done the solution and you can see the functions are like this it's a kind of periodic function periodic means it is again coming back to the definite point it started with so it could it could have become like this also so this is also periodic the frequency is high but in this case this is also a periodic function but it has a less frequency or frequency is equal to one or half so the point is if you take this lambda square positive then the solution this solution will not give you a periodic solution so that we know from the second order differential equation we have solved the second order differential equation and we know that you have to have a solution where you have a periodic solution and for periodic solution it has to be negative because if it is negative you can see this particular differential equation here if this is negative then the solution of this particular differential equation will be in terms of sin x and cos x that means a periodic function but if it would have been a positive lambda square then the solution would have been c1 e to the power lambda x plus c2 e to the power minus lambda x now exponential functions are not periodic so it will not be maintained because it has a periodic nature it is zero here again it will be zero so the exponential functions so linear combination of exponential function cannot give this particular nature and that is why you cannot choose this lambda square as positive because then it will lead to an unphysical solution and this is the heart of separation of variable you should you should understand this particular step why you choose negative or why you choose positive so i am again repeating this should be negative because if it is negative the solution of this differential equation will give you sine and cos function which has a periodicity if this is positive you will get linear combination of exponential functions and those functions will never be periodic and that is why we are discarding positive we are going ahead with negative so we have this solution for x x or uh, this is the special function solution and for the time one that is the time domain you have this particular differential equation and the solution of this particular differential equation is this 
we all know this is very simple to solve so we, we have taken three constants so this was this was a second order differential equation so this is giving two arbitrary constants c1 and c2 or this could be constants or this could be functions but as this is function of only one variable so this will be a constant only this is similarly here this is c3 this is another arbitrary constant so at this point we have to understand now in the equation we have three unknown arbitrary constants c1 c2 and c3 so there should be some mechanism by which we should be able to calculate c1 c2 and c3 so this is the upcoming problem now if you remember we had exactly three conditions one initial condition and two boundary conditions so there would be some procedures by which you can apply those three conditions to have the values for c1 c2 and c3 so we'll be talking about this in the upcoming slide so this is the solution for the space we have already seen now we have to look for what is my c1 and what is my c2 so let us put the first boundary condition that is at space x equal to 0 you have x0 is equal to 0 that means 0 so you have to put 0 here and you have to put 0 for the space so sin 0 is 0 so this term is uh, vanishing and cos 0 is 1 so you have c2 into 1 but c2 has to be 0 because the boundary condition is telling that x0 is 0 so c2 is 0 so you can again pause the video and think about it to satisfy this boundary condition c2 has to be 0 because cos 0 is 1 so in order to make it 0 c2 must be 0 so we have used one boundary condition and we have solution for c2 now let us go to the second boundary condition what we are doing at x equal to 1 so put x equal to 1 here and here so we know that c2 is already 0 so we don't have this particular term we only have this term so c1 sin lambda so here we have given c1 sin lambda is equal to 0 because as per the boundary condition this is 0 so sin if c1 sin lambda is 0 then lambda should be n pi this is a generic solution for sin lambda is equal to if sin lambda is 0 you have lambda is equal to n pi now we utilize two boundary conditions till this point we have a solution for c2 and we have a solution for lambda but not for this c1 still we do not know what is c1 but we obtain the value of lambda and where from this lambda came if you remember the lambda came from this step okay so you can think about it so we have already three unknown c1 c2 c3 so additional unknown lambda but we have only three conditions but somehow it will be manipulated and those I mean we will uh, we'll be able to find all those four that is c1, c2, c3 and lambda. So till this point we have c2, we have lambda. So what is missing? We don't know about c1 and we don't know about c3. Now what we do? We take the entire solution. Now entire solution is the algebraic multiplication of the two solutions that is x and t. So we have taken this and the solution is giving this form so txt from here c3 e to the power minus lambda square t we have taken and from this one we have c2 is 0 anyway so x is equal to c1 sin lambda x so we have put c1 sin lambda x so what it is coming it is coming multiplication of two constants c1 and c3 c multiplication of two constant will give you another constant so now we can get rid of this complexity these two constants can be merged into one constant and that we call bn and why this summation is coming because if you see here lambda is equal to n pi where n can be any integer 0 1 2 3 4 or anything that is why we have a 
linear combination of all the values of n and that is why we have this particular summation. So again I am repeating this particular lambda has a generic solution n pi and you have to take all the possibilities of n starting from 0 to any value say 1, 2, 3, 4 and that is why this summation is coming and in, in lambda we can replace n pi so it will be bn so bn is equal to multiplication of c1 and c3 and then we have this particular solution now we did not impose the initial condition yet so now this is the time to impose the initial condition and that's why I have again written the initial condition which is at t equal to 0 the function is x minus x square so we are we are putting this at t equal to 0 what is the value x minus x square and this is the solution summation of 0 to n b n sin n pi x now the point is how to calculate this b n we have already imposed the initial condition from this initial condition we will be using orthogonality to calculate this b n so in our last video we have talked about orthogonality in detail so this is a kind of series a finite series say 0 to n it is expanding from 0 to n and it could also be infinite series because we don't know the I mean maximum value of n it could go actually up to infinite so we can you can tell the series is never ending series but for exact solution we don't go for infinite terms if we calculate 4 5 terms that is enough for your solution so this is the reality but mathematically this is a kind of infinite series because n can be infinite now we have imposed the initial condition and we have to calculate bn so you have i mean what this series is this is sin 1 pi x sin 2 pi x sin 3 pi x and like this and we need to calculate all I mean and this constants will be similarly b1, b2, b3 and so on. So we have to calculate all those b1, b2 and b3. So generically a generic so thing is bn. So let us calculate for bn. When we calculate for bn for orthogonal from orthogonality what we do is we multiply by this particular term sin n pi x uh, in both the sides. So what it will do, it will cancel out all the terms in the right hand side except sin n pi x. Because we know sin n pi x into sin m pi x, those are orthogonal functions. If n not equal to m, then it is 0. If n equal to m, then it has certain integral value and that's why uh, we can get rid of this summation term. We can only have this term where n equal to m so that's why you have sin n pi x into another sin n pi x and in the left hand side you have this because we have done the multiplication in both the sides we have multiplied with this and now we are taking an integration from 0 to 1 because our solution space is expanding from 0 to 1 so we are taking an integration from 0 to 1 in the right hand side you can see you have sin n pi x into sin n pi x that means sin square n pi x so we multiply by 2 divide by 2 so 2 sin square x you know 2 sin square x, x is equal to uh, 1 plus cos 2 n pi x because cos square cos 2 x is equal to cos square x plus minus sin square x so it is giving you cos square x plus sin square x plus cos square x minus sin square x uh, actually it will be minus uh, I'm sorry this one will be 1 minus cos x not plus extremely sorry if you see this will be minus no issues we have changed it to minus because 2 sin square is x equal to 1 minus cos 2x. So what do we do? Now if you do the integration. So again cos x integration is sin x. And in 0 to 1 limit this part will become 0. 
so you have only the dx part dx integration is x from 0 to 1 the answer will be 1 so this entire integration the value is 1 so 1 means you only left with this bn by 2 so if you want to calculate bn you have to multiply the other side by 2 so bn is equal to 2 into this integration so if you do this integration the value will be this so nothing you have to just do an integration you know I mean simple integration and by the integration you get this value then what do we do we plug in the value of bn in this equation so we had the solution equation here if you see this is the generic solution we calculated the value of bn so we are plugging in this value and that is giving me the solution so we have a solution now if you look at all the things are known you know this n is expanding from 0 to n so this is known this t is the time at which you want to calculate the temperature so t is known x is also any value suppose on the solution space at x equal to 0.5 and time equal to 2 second i am trying to calculate so at x you put 0.5 and at time you put say 2 second and you have to take a linear combination of any possible values of, of n so 1 2 3 as i have mentioned don't i mean if you are trying to calculate the temperature you can take 5 6 terms so your n can practically vary from 0 to say 5 and calculate this thing so this will give you the temperature so what you can do is you can if you are aware of comsol i have done the solution with comsol so the similar solution you can obtain by solving this particular analytical form so you will have the temperature and you can plot so if you do it it will be very much helpful for you so in this particular video we learned about separation of variable we learned about homogeneity in boundary condition we learned about how to use orthogonality to calculate those constants and also we learned about the practical application like if you want to calculate practical temperatures then don't take infinite series take four five six terms maximum and that will be good enough so today i stop here with this content in the upcoming video we will be talking about the laplace equation solution of the laplace equation in two dimension because uh, this particular separation of variable will be used for the solution of this equation as well and that is why although we are doing the course on unsteady heat conduction equation we will be solving this particular equation in this series itself because it has a relation so as you are learning this you can easily learn about it and that's why we will cover it up and in upcoming series also we will take two dimensional heat equations and there we can again discuss about this so this particular series will be continuing uh, we have as we have mentioned uh, this particular solution is done with a with a boundary condition which is not which is not that much realistic so we want to solve some real life engineering problem so we'll, we must do some other solution with a different boundary condition so we'll be talking about it in the upcoming videos and then we'll go for the numerical techniques because as i have mentioned numerical techniques are very much useful because sometimes you don't have analytical solution this is a very simple equation so you have an analytical solution but what if you don't have analytical solution then numerical technique is very much useful in engineering this is used like anything in all cfd simulation softwares there are hard code numerical algorithms where they saw they can actually solve multiple equations simultaneously by numerical algorithm so that's why we'll focus on numerical algorithms we'll be doing hands-on sessions on different coding say coding with python or matlab and yeah again i'm telling this particular series will be continuing so do follow us and i request you to subscribe 
to my channel because it will give me motivation for do more work for you thank you